Good morning. Good morning. Man, Robert Harris came up to me and said, today is also the Marine Corps' birthday. They're 235 years old today. Ain't that good? Mm. You know, Todd touched on the fact that, uh, Casey, I'm really loud. <clears throat> when I know I'm loud, I'm loud. Todd touched on the fact that, that it's so cool when God puts the elements of his worship service together. And, and I, I don't know how much y'all realize when that happens, how much it blesses those of us that are focused and spend all week praying over and seeking. Because I haven't talked to any of them about the message. I mean, you know, a lot of times I'll text Brian or somebody, and a lot of times the, the members of the team, they're working pretty good as a team, so each one of them takes a week and maps out the music. You know, they're, they're, this is a little old jab at some of our teams and people to begin to engage and work at taking ownership and being proud of the fact that you have responsibilities. And, I mean, Jace called me two weeks ago and, and like, hey, Brother Jay, I'm, I'm putting together the music for Sunday. Quit letting everybody else do it for you. Start taking part in every area that you can to say, hey, I, I'm taking the initiative. I'll, I'll help. What do I need to do here? Anyway, let's preach. I, so, But this week, I didn't t talk to Brian at all. And Wednesday at church, uh, Todd was here, and they, they're going to practice this song. And, and uh, who wrote, who's that song by? Ma Metallica and Bob Seger. Well, I thought Metallica was a paint. I'm like, well, what? He said, no, 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 it's a great. He said, you know. I said, man, I don't know. He said, oh, I said, you're going to sing a Metallica? He said, yeah, big hair, tight breeches, makeup wearing men sing it. I said, you're going to sing that here? He said, it'll work. It'll work. Well, I had already been being led, and two weeks ago I shared with y'all that there's five different types of fools in the, word, in the book of Proverbs, but he's only referred to in the English translation as the word fool, so we don't really get it. And that, that's not left me. It has still been in me. It's still been working on me. And the fact that God orchestrated and put this song on their heart to, to sing this Sunday, and, and the fact that he's prepared me to start a, a six-week series on drifters, or on fools, is not a coincidence. It's really a blessing and confirmation for us to get. So I pray that... Uh, that today, and the reason I felt like we need to change up, the way I was just going to do service was, this is not an emotional series. This is not a, I mean, I'm, I, don't in, I don't feel that I'm going to be just weeping and, you know, I think it's an enlightening. I think some of you are going to be frustrated because you're going to realize who you are. Some of you will be irritated because that's what's in your, that's who you are. You, that's, you're part of the, the fool that you are as you, like me, I used to really, really get defensive and angry when somebody told me the truth about me. I didn't like it. So some of you will be that way. Some of you will be oblivious. You'll be so foolish. You'll just be like, well, I'm glad, they, I'm glad he preached that because such and such sure need to hear it. You know, you, you walk in here the same. It, you, you'll leave just as stupid as you was when you got here and ain't nothing we can do about that. That's just how you are. So anyway, this is not really, but I think this is a series, especially as we finish out the end of this year, to challenge you, to help you enlighten, to help you go, I'm done drifting. I, I, I look back on 2013, and, and you know, what, what was it about? What did it achieve? And John stood up here last week and said, Jay, if we preach week in and week out and, and there's nothing different, why in the heck are we doing it? I, that's drifting. That's just kind of, well, I'm just here today and gone. I mean, it just, it don't, you don't get nowhere. And you get frustrated. And, and I want to I wanna just take... And, and move in that direction. So we're going we're gonna to preach on drifters. And, and uh, this week I'm just doing a little bit of an introduction. And Monday, Sunday evening, we flew out to South Carolina. And uh, I, we spoke in South Carolina Tuesday morning early. But Monday morning, me and Christy think we got a, a day. You know, usually we fly out one day, speak the next morning, and fly back in. It's about a 48-hour quick deal. You know, and, but we had an extra day in there because it was a Monday, Tuesday. So we could fly out Sunday. And, and I thought, shoot, we ain't going to do Nothing Monday. I mean, I'm just going to, we're going to order room service. Well, we did. It was horrible. <clears throat> but we, we, we ate it. But at 7.30 Monday morning, my phone started ringing. I'm in South Carolina. Guess what was wrong? Yeah, I had cows out. It's not an unnormal, that's a pretty regular phone call in my life. And I can take them pretty well. And they said, 
No, it was, it was the lady right down the road from the least pressure that I got, and I'm not going to say her name, but she was plum excited. There's a bunch of them. 99, to be in, in fact. I said, well, there's a few out probably. She said, no, there's, there's bunches. There's hundreds. They're everywhere. <laughs> I said, well, I, I, okay, and I could tell she's a little bit panicky, and if she was to ever get the inclination that I was in South Carolina... It'd be bad. I said, it'd be all right. We'll, I'll be there. Just don't worry about it. We'll get there, and we'll get them put up. It's, they're just wandering. They're just yearnings. They're, they're not really mean. They're not. Well, they're just everywhere. They're in the road, and the bus couldn't get down the road, and they're, they're in the yards. And, and I said, yes, ma'am, and they're, they're just going to mow your grass for you <laughs> and fertilize it some, and, and, and they'll move on, I, I'm sure. It wasn't 15 minutes later I get another call. Man, hey, I just making sure you knew that these, that's, that's the exact road and that's a picture of the exact calves. Uh, not all of them, by the way. <clears throat> hey, these things are, uh, they're, they're, they're down here at such and such as Hay Meadow, which is a mile from where they started, in 15 minutes. And I said, okay, that ain't no problem. We'll get, we'll get there. That ain't no problem. I said, just leave them alone because they ain't hurting nothing. They just drifting. Just, I mean, just let them alone. They'll be fine. <clears throat> I hang up and Chris says, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to phone a friend. <laughs> you know? So I go to wearing them out. And, and Hunt answers the phone and I said, hey, I got calves out in Concord. He said, how many? I said, well, all of them. <laughs> he said, where are they at? I said, all over. <laughs> where are they going? Mexico. We better get ahead of them. <laughs> I mean, Miss, the landlady, she done told me, if you'll bring horses and if y'all will come in on I mean, she done planned the attack out. <laughs> you know, you, if you, you need to hurry, though, because you need to get them horses here and y'all need to come in off this road and come by the Martin's Chapel Church and you come in from that side, you can flush them. I'm like, yes, ma'am. We're, hey, Calvary's coming. And, and Mark says, well, I ain't going to get there for a little while, which means hopefully in a day. When you're dealing with Mark Hunt, I said, "Ain't no problem. They, they ain't going far. They're just wandering. It's nothing to panic about. These caves are full. I mean, they've been on grass this deep. They're full. They're just chilling. You know what I'm saying? They're just strolling. They, they're not trying to avoid arrest or flee from immigration. They're just chilling out. They're just. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So it's not. It's okay. And I told. I, I got another phone call. Hey, these caves are up. They're blocking the road. I said, if you'll just wait, they'll get out of the road and you can go through. Well, what are you going to do with them? I said, I'm, I'm going I'm to get them back eventually. Well, when are you going to be here? I'll wait on you. I said, don't do that. <laughs> <clears throat> and Mark's the only person I admitted I'm in South Carolina. I said, look, hon, I'm in South Carolina. I mean, if we wait on me to get them, we really will have to go get them back because they're traveling south. And, and they've been where they're at for a year, but they're just, they're full they feel good. One of them found a hole and said, hey, come on, man. This is cool. And they've done went through the deer lease and wiped out all the green stuff for them hunters. I don't know who the hunter is. He don't like me none. So, I mean, you know, they've just been on a little excursion. And I, I thought, man, Christy's all like, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to eat. And what am I going to what, what can I do? So, I, I, as I prepared for this message, it started last Monday, and I'm like, man, ain't that just the way Christians are? One calf, or maybe two, found a hole and drifted out. And, they, and the rest of them, I've watched them. They will wait patiently, and they will single file out the same hole. I mean, and, and, and they're not no big hurt. It's the same thing Christians do. You, they don't even know why they left. They have no idea where they're going. They have no need for anything they might find. Oh, that's the way they're going. Let's go. And they don't have a clue how far they're getting. How much, I mean, them calves had no idea that the school bus drivers for Carlisle ISD will wipe out a yearling. I mean, they have no idea a mad housewife that loves her yard will kill man and beast when he poops in the garage. They have no concern about the dangers that they put themselves or me. They just, hey, hey, hey. Cleopas is going, let's go too. And they just start drifting. That's the way most Christians are. We do not realize 
why we're even drifting. We don't even realize that we are drifting. We don't even realize how much danger we're getting in until we're smack dab in the middle of it. And we look up and go, how did I get so far? Just like that song Todd sang, how did I get so far? Here I am again. How did I get way out here? And I want us to learn to stop drifting so much. We, my wife has a new motto, and, and her motto is, don't let it be for nothing. Don't let it be for nothing. Jerry Hansen has a motto. What are we going to do now, Lord? Right? Or what's next, Lord? I have a motto. I'm just getting there. Everybody that comes at me with issues and attitudes and complaining about how immature I am, and how, how I say, hey, 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 I'm just getting there. So can't be mad at me I ain't there yet because I know I ain't there yet. I'm just getting there. And that's what I'm going to be doing till I go home. But I am getting there. So, so here's the message. All this whole deal is I just want you to start getting there. Because it, it, there's nothing more frustrating than dealing with a bunch of drifters. They, even the drifter themselves begin to wonder, is this all for nothing? Because every time they turn around, they're right back where they used to be. Then they'll be all of a sudden, they, 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 they're close and they're moving forward and they feel closer and they feel safety and they feel... Oh, man, I don't, I'm not sure how we got here because all we did was drift. All we did was follow somebody else that got us back over in this area, and, and, and they'll be there for a little while, but then the first thing you know, the wind's going to blow and change direction, and they're going to drift again, and they'll be right back. After you do that for about 10 or 12, 15 years, you really start saying, is this even worth it? Am I really, I mean, it really, is it worth it? And the person that loves you and cares for you and always is the one that has to try to go back and get you and, and get you to follow them back. Mark said, what do I need to do? I said, go with a pickup. You get one of them to follow you, they'll all follow you. If you just get one of them. Well, Mark got them all back in. 7.30 Monday night, Kyle Childers called me. Hey, you got 25 or 30 calves down there at Larry Key's hay meadow. I said, well, it needs grazing. It's too late to cut it. And no sense in wasting it. He said, no. I said, he said, but I'm worried about the school bus first thing in the morning, them calves all over and all them kids. I said, all right, you, you want to put them up? Well, they need to be put up. I said, all right, let me call you some help. So I called Bubba Martin. Bubba said, do I need to catch my horse? I'm like, no. Get you a feed sack. I ain't got a feed sack. Get you a bucket. I ain't got a bucket. Get you a bell. What do you, what do you mean? I said, if you get one of them, you get one of them interested in what you got, he'll follow you and the rest of them will follow him. All you got to do is get one of them. That's the way most Christians are. Most Christians are just follow, they just follow. They just follow. And, and what's, what's, I mean, that's what we're called to do. Christ said, follow me. So that's how, we're, that's how we come to know Jesus. That's how we come to in relationship with Jesus is by following him. What we have to do to stop drifting is start opening up our eyes and our ears and discern what's worth following and what ain't. What we should follow, what we, who we should follow, who, <coughs> who is huge. Who we should follow, who we shouldn't follow. Where we should follow and where we should say, I ain't, I ain't crossing that line. See what I'm saying? So I hope by the end of this series, we kind of can know who we are individually. Go, you know what? I am, I am this. I am this one. I am this one. I am this one. And, and go, you know what else I know? Such and such. I, I believe that's this one. And, that, and every time I go to following them and every time I go to getting in relationship, every time I work and bust my can to love them and bring them back, I know it's just temporary. Why am I frustrating myself? Because there's different ways to handle them, and nobody wants to preach on this, but there's a certain time and a place where you kick that sucker to the curb. There's a certain time and a place where you realize all they are is destruction, and, and they're sent for a purpose to deviate you from the course that Christ has called you to, and you should kick them out of your life. You should, I should kick them out of this church. The elder body should unite and go, you know what? All you do is cause people to drift and wonder. And we love you, and we want you in this flock, but you continuously come in, and then you stir up a little bit, and you get a few to follow you, and a few to watch you, and then you drift out. And you know what? Once you're out, you're out. Because I care more about this flock than I do one. Now, here's the biggest misconception, and this ain't in there. Don't worry about finding the Scripture. And I want to clear the air on this. I'm fully convinced that the Scripture that says the good shepherd will leave the 99 and find the one that is lost. He didn't say the, num the one that's lazy, the one that's stupid, the one that's rebellious the one that's drifting he said lost So a tremendous difference in that so when you leave here hating on me because i've said i'm sick and tired of begging you to stay right and quit drifting i, I wasn't talking about the lost 
If you're here and don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all of us should be willing to leave our comfort in our surroundings and anybody that we, and go get you because you're dying and going to hell. But if you're a self-proclaiming, professing Christian that just is hell-bent on leading people away and getting people drifting and getting people as messed up as you are, you need to get your butt out. Because all you're going to do is hurt the little sheep and lead them astray, and some of them will get run over, and you'll be the one standing on the bar ditch going, ha, <laughs> You see that? I got an old dip dog at the house that does that. I have went through eight or ten dogs. You know why? She's a jealous old bitty. And she gets to playing with them just long enough, they'll follow her to Highway 64. And then she'll be laying in the front yard. <laughs> this dog is worthless. She ain't never barked at nothing but sirens when they go down the road. She ain't never helped me pin a cow. I ain't never protected my kids. She ain't never done nothing but eat. And lay in my yard for years since 2000. And I'm not going to shoot her or run her off. I don't know why I've let this happen. She lives in my yard and benefits me none. But she has drawn so many dogs. I buried Ken Kendall Grace's little birthday present from Santa Claus last three, three weeks ago, a month ago. Uh, cowboy. <laughs> a winter dog is nothing more than a little bitty speed bump on Highway 64. You know how he got there? Because Dot said, follow me. And got him to drifting. My seven-year-old's heart's broken, bawling. And i got to explain to her why Santa Claus don't bring more than one puppy to a kid every year. <laughs> All because I've allowed Dot to live in my yard and hang around in my yard and lead dog after dog after dog into danger. I better preach. Here's the thing. We're going to be in the book of Proverbs. Now, I love the book of Proverbs. And Proverbs is very clear when we read it for what it says and when we receive it for what it means. The problem is with Proverbs, we don't like it. The word Proverbs actually means words to rule life. You don't like for your life to be ruled by words. You've rebelled from words ever since you was in diapers. I mean, what other generation, what other type of, of being can be told, don't touch that, it will burn. And at two, they go, really? <laughs> I mean, think about it. Uh, it, it, what other people, now I'm not bashing on you, but you know this is true, and this is the irony of, iron, uh, 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 of humans. The package says, warning, this will cause cancer, and you smoke them anyway. I mean, I mean I'm not bashing you. Hey, look here. Oh, it ain't in my pocket. Sack of chewing tobacco got on it. This will cause, look, look. These are all false. You know why? Because I'm hard-headed and stupid. I chose to dip it anyway. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Why are we like that? We are the most hard. <laughs> Sorry about that. Am I, I, I mean, it's just, why? Why? If it's on its own label warning you, why in the heck won't we heed the warning? I mean, come on, where the artists don't get us. I mean, I frustrate myself. So, they're just proverbs, they're fences. If you would not see them as, listen, if you would not see them as the prison fence, but see them as the playground fence, you'd have lots of fun and never fear danger and never fear anybody coming and snatching you. You with me? Yeah. But we don't see them as that. We don't see the fence till we're in the prison fence. Then we go, yeah, I'm going to have to survive here now. Hang out a while. Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. It's a lot of scripture, and, uh, but it basically lays out what the book of Proverbs is for. 1 through 7, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to discern the saying of understanding, to receive instructions in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity. Now, I had a long time figuring out what that equity meant. It don't mean a home equity loan. It means a, a good, even level, fair, balanced life. All right. To give prudence to the naive, the youth knowledge and dis discretion, a wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. To understand a proverb and figure the words of the wise and their riddles, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and fools despise wisdom and instruction. Three people were laid out that the book of Proverbs was for. For all of us as Christians... To listen to, to hear, to learn from, and to help us stay in the fences of. 
The first one he talked about was the, 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 the foolish, the, the unwise, the youth. It said the youth, the, uh, uh, says, uh, says, we well, go back to one. The power of Solomon to know wisdom and instruction, to discern the saying of understanding, to receive instructions, to wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity. To give burdens to the naive and to the youth of knowledge and discretion. All of that is brought to you as you're young and naive. All of us are young and naive at some point. All of us in this world and in life and as new born again Christians, we're naive, we're foolish, we're young. We have to be enlightened. Book of Proverbs does it. Book of Proverbs is also for wisdom, for increasing knowledge, for the person that is somewhat educated or has wisdom about the world, has an understanding and sees the offenses, it increases it. Then it also addresses the fact that there are just plum fools. They despise wisdom and instruction. Now there's five different times that he speaks of the word fool. In the original language, it's five separate words, but in our American translation, it's one word, fool. Now here's the key. Proverbs was written to enlighten us, to make us wise. You know what God sees as wise? took me a long time to get this. God does not see knowledge, mental capacity, mental ability. That's not what's wise to him. What's wise to God is the obedience and the receptiveness to the truth. If you will receive the truth as he reveals it, you will be wise. It is not, listen, Proverbs is not quick little truthful sayings that are make you seem smart and witty. or They're not, little, they're not, they're not none of that. They're not nothing in a little book that you can just open daily and get some daily proverb. I just need a little daily truth. No, they are really parameters, words from God to put parameters around you to, for you to mold and live your life by. If you will do that, guess what you will be? Wise. How many of us are wise? Scripture says not many of you should call yourselves wise, right? I mean, not many of I'm not. I, I hope I'm getting wiser. But I'm not, wise, I'm not wise yet. There are days when I, I'm, I'm fairly wise. I'm like, man, I get that. Thank you, Lord. But it's those days that I'm wise when I'm truly obedient and open to hear the truth and receive it, even when it's about me. That's when I need it the most. When somebody calls me and says, hey, Jay, I love you, but man, what are you thinking? Are you sure about this? Have you thought about that? And I go, I'll, I'll, I'll react in one or two ways. And I can, do, I can do one or two ways all the time, anytime, every time, if I ain't careful. Well, yeah, I've thought about it. I've thought about everything, or I wouldn't even mention it. That's, my, that's pretty quick to come out. Or I go, well, I thought I had, but tell me, what you're, tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you're seeing. You know which one is wise? The one that says, hey, man, I thought I did, but tell me what's, what's God showed you. Well, where are you at on that? Well, how do, you, how do you feel? Wait a minute, let me. And I receive it. Then I will be wise. The other guy ain't that wise. He's hard-headed. I'm both of them sometimes. I'm all of them sometimes. I promise you, if we will live by the words of Proverbs and adhere to the truth that they reveal, we will be wise. Proverbs' desire is that we would be able to discern. It teaches and gives us the abilities to discern. You know what's wrong with most of us? We don't discern what we should follow, what we shouldn't follow, where we should go, what we shouldn't do. We don't discern it. We don't take time and we don't go... Man, I just, I mean, my, my discernment says I shouldn't be there. My discernment says I should go and minister to, with, with Mitch. You know what I'm saying? Discernment says it is not going to do you any good to continuously reach out to that son of gun. All he's going to do is bite you when you walk off or stab you in the back. Pray for him, tell him you love him, and keep moving. Or when to go back, when to keep going back, when to keep praying, you know what I'm saying? That's discernment. If we could get discernment through becoming wise and accepting the truth of God's word, our lives would be so on the road. I mean, it, it, Proverbs 2, 9 says, then you will discern righteous and justice and equity and every good course. You will have a good course. You will know, and you won't be drifting. You, won't, you will discern who I should follow, who I shouldn't follow, who I should, where I should go, where I shouldn't go, what I should say, what I shouldn't say. You know what I'm saying? You will discern that, but you don't discern that by any other means except gaining wisdom from the truths revealed to you through God's Word. Are y'all following me at all? This is not a touchy feeling. You need to either get something 
and go, by golly, that's why I'm always scratching my head and confused. I just want to, and I just want to do a little teaching on how we to stop the drifting. I just want us to begin to see the true words that we, are to, we need to discern. And the only way you discern, listen, you know the difference in discernment and judgment? Difference in, it's simple. Most of us don't want to discern because we are convinced that discernment is judgment. That's a lie from Satan. Discernment and judgment have nothing in common. Here's the only thing. If I discern, I shouldn't hang out with you, then that is what has been revealed to me through wisdom that I've gained by the Scriptures. But if I just simply say, I ain't hanging out with you, you know what that is? That's judgment because I'm so stupid I can't just decide that. I need to be enlightened to decide that. And if, you, and if, if listen, hey, if Benny comes to me and says, man, you, you ain't come to the house and roped, or you ain't, you ain't what's the deal? I, and if I have discerned it, I can look at Benny and say, Benny, I love you, pal, but it, it backs me up every time. I struggle. When I, go, when I go hang out with you, we have a great time, but then I feel like crap for three days because I know what we did we shouldn't have done. I love you, but listen, I've discerned I don't need to do that. You know what happens? The Holy Spirit will help convict him and convince him he ought not do that. Here's what happens when you do the other side. When we've been hanging out and we're running good and we're, we, you know, we're good, you know, and Benny says, man, I ain't seen you in weakness. I don't like what you do. Benny, I ain't hanging out with you. You know what Benny just got? Judgment. Judgment from me. And you know what his response will be? You holy roller, hobnobbing, airheaded sucker. Who you think you are? You think you're that much better than me? You think, well, fine, go on with yourself. I don't need you. I drink mine too. Yours also. I mean, that's the difference in judgment and discernment. Discernment is enlightenment through wisdom of God's Word. Judgment is when I decide that's not what's best for me, it's not what's best for mine, and I make that decision. If you make a decision based solely on what your ability to decide is on, you will be in judgment eventually, even if you don't mean to. But every time you make a decision on, through discernment of God's Word, you have God's Word in you, through you, revealing the truth through you. You, get, you just opened a whole other avenue. You just opened a whole other avenue of evangelism and ministering. Does that make sense? So, no, I didn't mean to pick on you, pal. Me and you ain't never drank together. So they can't say that. If that ends up on Facebook, it's a lie. <laughs> Hebrews 5.14. <laughs> Hebrews 5.14 says, But solid food is for the mature, who because of practice... Listen. <laughs> who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. If you don't practice it, you ain't going to be able to do it. If you, they don't play that stuff. I mean, I can pick it up. I can even look better than most of them holding it. <laughs> say amen, Christy. I ain't preaching again until you say amen. All right. <laughs> But that don't mean I can play the thing, right? L listen, you, discernment is not something that... Now listen, here's another lie I think Satan has convinced us, that we have been given the gift of discernment. If it was a gift, why would we have to practice it? You don't have to practice a gift. Somebody says, hey, I got a gift for you. They hand it out, you go what? Boom, thank you very much. Put it in your pocket. Now, I believe there is spiritual enlightenment that comes, and discernment is part of that spiritual enlightenment. But if we don't practice it, you don't develop it, you can't use it. He plainly says it is food for the mature who because of practice have their senses. Where are your senses at? We got five, right? Eyes, ears, mouth, touch, feel, nose, smell. You ought to be able to smell a turd when you, before you see it. <laughs> if you practice them, listen, you think people don't stink? They can open their mouth and you can say, that's a bunch of bull. My wife got prayed over in South Carolina. You know what one of the number, you know what they prayed over? This lady, they live in Kansas, and they run an international house of prayer ministry. And, and, they, and she said, I just want to pray for you. She put her hands on Christian. She starts praying, and she said, and God, you have blessed her with the ability to smell the bull crap and just to reveal it for what it is. And I'm thinking, hey, we getting in my marriage. <laughs> You're just praying here. But we don't, listen, this is what you can do in the body. You can strengthen and practice and increase your senses, and they can be trained to discern. So your body has to be active in discerning what only your spirit can. 
Does that make sense? You cannot numb your senses with drugs and alcohol and pornography and fornication and rudeness and nasty mouth and, and then expect your spirit to discern. You better get some control. Y'all, is that making sense? Man. That wasn't even on the notes. To drift. Y'all know what it means to drift? To drift means to wander aimlessly. To Listen, leave it, read the next one. To, y'all read it with me. To deviate from a set course. Now listen, how many of you know you was created by Almighty God for a purpose? Right? He has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Am I right? When you become born again, believer, living for Jesus, do you know that your plan was, was put in gear? Right? You know the only reason why you're sitting there and you don't have a clue what the plan is? You know the only reason why you're sitting there and you're bald or gray-headed or you're 70 and a grandma or grandpa and you don't know what the plan is? You know why? You have drifted. Since you became a Christian, you have drifted in and out of God's will. If you will stop drifting and stay in his will, you will know his plan. He said, I have a plan for you. Right? What scripture is that? I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. Everybody loves that scripture. Everybody, but how many of you know it? How many of you know the plan and can say, you know what? Hey, I'm getting the ability to discern what gets me off the plan, what gets me out of the plan, and how to stay with the plan. So we're going to talk about five different fools. <clears throat> We're going to talk about five different fools, and they're all cattle or horse-related, and, and I need to close, I'm sure, uh, then over the next few weeks. Yeah, I need to get here. Next five, the first one are baby calves. Now, baby calves, they, they, they get lost sometimes. Baby, how, many of you, how many of you ever had baby calves on the wrong side of the fence? Man, mama's bawling, right? Wearing a trail out. Ah! Ah! Calves on the other side bawling. Ah! Ah! And how many of you have a hard time catching that little old thing? All of us have, right? But you know, what do you got to do? You got to get him caught and get him back to his mama. He had no idea he was even getting lost. He had no idea he was even, that that that, that little wire separates me from mama. He didn't have no idea. Somehow or another, his little tail squirmed through it, and now he's on the wrong side. His greatest desire is to get back on the right side. So we go help them get on the right side because he's naive. He don't know nothing. That word in the Greek word is pathe, not fool, pathe. But in Proverbs, Proverbs 7, 7, I saw a man, I saw among the naive and discerned among the youth a young man lacking sense. He just don't know nothing. Okay? That's the first fool that you got to be able to see. Every one of these will have different ways that you need to handle and address them. The first one, you're gentle. You, care, you go get them and carry them back. I mean, when I was a kid, growing up in West Texas ranching, I longed for the opportunity to drape a calf over my saddle. It was the greatest achievement of my childhood. It like got Dale killed, but I was blessed by it. I, we got a couple of seconds for me to share this. I couldn't have been five. I couldn't get on off my horse. I was still peeing standing up in the saddle. And, and I decided I had to get off and get this calf because this calf was going to die. It just wasn't going to make it. I had to do it. I had to do it. And I'm off my saddle. And I, so you know how little I am, but I thought I could get this calf up on this saddle. And the calf's brand new, maybe a day old. I mean, but he still weighs 60 pounds. I, can't, I don't weigh 40. I can't pick him up. And the mama cow is right there. And Dale comes riding up. What are you doing? I said, this calf's going to die. I've got to carry him. He can't make the trip. Leave him. Just leave him. No, got to take him. Got to take him. Got to take him. I'm arguing. About that, and Dale had an old yellow air dog, air, Airedale dog named Sassy. Best dog ever lived. This old dog stayed right with Dale or me and has whooped many a men for us. So. She's right there, and all of a sudden, this old cow has put up with me. I got a hold of this calf, and this calf is a bawling. Ah, and that cow's right there. And, you know, I mean, I'm keeping the calf between me and the cow best I can because I don't want her killing me. And he's like, just put her, just leave her. I said, I ain't going to. About that time, Sassy nails that cow right in the ear. Whack! And has a hope, and the fight's on, and the cow's bellering and can't move because Sassy's just got her. Whack! Dale jumps off, grabs me, throws me on the horse, grabs the calf, sets the horse in my lap, gets back on his horse, and we take off. That's how you take care of this, what he's talking about in Proverbs 7. The, the, they're foolish. They don't know no different. I didn't know no different. My brother took care of me because I was going to get me and the calf killed. 
you'd be compassionate, you know what I'm saying? You'd be sympathetic, you, 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 you put out for them, you've you got you to get them back. The next one is in Proverbs 12, 15. These are yearlings. These are what got out on me this week. They're unreasonable, really. The word in, he, in Greek is a uh, evil. It's translated as fool, but it actually is E-V-E-E-L. They are teenagers. Proverbs 12, 15, a fool rejects his father's discipline, but he who regards reproof is sensible. Listen, they know, but they believe they're smarter than everybody else in the world, so they're going to do it their way anyway. That's what all teenagers are, right? But you got to be patient. you got to know that this is just a season, and hopefully they'll grow out of it, right? you got to kind of go, you know, I'm going to put up with a little bit of that. I'm not going to beat him within an inch of his life, just, just make him scare him. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you kind of, and you, you keep going, okay, come on now. I know that was a bad wreck. I had a dad call me. Said, thank the Lord my son's okay. Tor- totaled the vehicle, but he's okay. It's all good. Uh, but, but that sucker's sweating because he ain't sure how he's going to pay for this truck, and I ain't telling him I'll, I'll pay for it. I'm, I want him to sweat about it. About 30 minutes later, the son calls me. Anyway, you can come see me. I go visit with him. Guess the first thing we did? We come to know Jesus Christ. I said, because all that wreck and all that truck, all that don't matter. What matters is where you at with the Lord? Well, I've just been waiting. I said, what you waiting on? Another wreck? Had the dad not given him that time of the mom and the dad to say, to, for that boy to ponder and wonder, how am I going to get back? I'm not in, I, I done drifted, and I'm not in daddy's will, mama's will, or the Lord's will. I done drifted a little bit, and that sucker was hurting, wanting back in. See, that's how you got to deal with teenagers sometimes. You got to let them hurt a little bit so they really not want to get back out there again. Anyway, that's a teenager. That's what, that's what Proverbs is going to teach us to recognize who that is. Then you got, the, then you, you got a, another group that's just a stubborn, stubborn old spoiled, rotten cow. They're arrogant and prideful. This is by far the largest group of Christian fools that we have. I am him, been him, can be him again. Proverbs 18, 2, a fool does not delight in understanding, but only in revealing his own mind. If every time you talk to them, they have to tell you what they know, they are a fool, and you need to just quit listening. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to have what's revealed. They want to state their case. They want to make sure you know where they're coming from. I don't care where you're coming from. I don't want to hear what you think. I want to hear what the Word says. Now, now listen, there's a difference in, in having a discussion and everybody getting enlightened and working through something. But if every time you go deal with somebody and you go, hey, man, I've just been seeing, uh, I, I, I've been noticing you drifting and you post on Facebook, I'll drink like hell as long as I want to. Well, hell's where you're going to end up. I just want you, and they automatically start saying, well, you just don't understand. You just don't know this. And you, you don't know the week I've had. Man, I don't care what kind of week you had. I know the future that you hold. That is the most Christians we have, is that right there? I don't know why I can't get nowhere. I don't know why I'm always doing what I used to do and what I can't do and I want to do. I can't do what I do. I don't want to do. I don't know why. Because you don't listen. You don't have any wisdom to have God's truth revealed into your life so that you can see why you drift. You don't want to know. You're hard-headed and you're arrogant. And all you want to do is tell me why you do what you do. It, 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 anyway, that's three weeks from now. The fourth one, the fourth one, now these next two groups, four and five, they're really evil. Remember the scripture talked about the foolish, the wise, and the evil. We need to be able to discern those. This one, is, these next two, they're really evil. They're fence rollers. Walt Whitaker called them fence rollers. These are cow, cow water fence rollers. What that means is no matter where you put her, she's finna find a fence roll and she's finna walk it till she finds a way out of it. Christians are that way. They're going to find the limit, they're going to find what they shouldn't do, and they're going to walk it and, and, until they can find a way to get out. Proverbs 14, 8 through 9 says, The wisdom of the sensible is to understand his way, but the foolishness of fools is deceit. Fools mock at sin, but among the upright there is good will. This cow right here is that cow that you know, you know when you put her back. You and her and all the other cows know she ain't staying. You know what I mean? It's like cowology. They're going, I don't know why you're wasting your time. She won't go, she ain't going to stay. She's going to be back before you, you get your taillights out of, the, out of sight. <laughs> Gone again. Right? That's another rock and roll song, Gone Again. Is that the same song? Gone Again. All right. So, you got to handle that a little bit different. You got to handle that, that cow different. You, you, uh, they're, they're, they're always a problem. They're all, it's like it never ends. All right, the last one is a committed maverick. This word in, in the original language was n- 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 n-a-w-b-a-w-l. 
senseless and they are completely rebellious. They don't even think what they're doing is wrong. They think what they're doing is what they have the right to do. They think they're not drifting when they're out. They're drifting when they're in. They think this is my life. I'll do it my way. Now listen, it's hard to hear, but them's the ones you better just cut and loose. Them are the ones when they're out of your herd, you never need to let them back in your herd. They need to go straight to the slaughterhouse. And you don't need to care enough about the next man's herd not to take them to the sale barn and tag them as a test cow, good mama raising. That's a Hank Winch and she's ever head cut off. That's what's wrong with churches today, see? We have tr- people, and you know, there's problems. There's people that bring problems into church. There's people that create crap, and Satan sends them just to create division and destruction and distractions and to make us drift. Do y'all know that? Here's what we do. You know what we do? Instead of calling it what it is and saying you have no right to be in the house of the Lord, you are used by the enemy, and until you get right before the Lord and until you're crushed in your iniquities, until you have completely surrendered and died to yourself and been resurrected in Jesus Christ's power and the blood of the Holy Blood of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't come back. And when I find out where you go, I'm going to call them and tell them about you. That's what we don't do. We don't want to do that, do we? I'm sick of that. That's a, that's a bunch of sissies. You need to call it what it is. You know how many times people have showed up in this church and in our life and it took us three years to figure out they wasn't here for no other reason but their own stinking game? You know how many people get hurt along the way? A bunch. You know how long it takes to get them healed and get them over and get them moving forward? A long time. You know how much more I would appreciate it now, a phone call in 07 that said, hey, I know he, he looks good, smells good, talks good, no scripture good, but he's only there for his own deal. And he will leave you damaged and hurt. You know how much more better off I'd be right now and this church would be if we ever got any of that? You know how many times that's ever happened? Never. I've had them say, well, you know, they left our church, they left with another woman, they left with this, they left with that. Why didn't you call and give somebody a warning? We don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. We don't want to, listen, this is hard to preach. I told y'all y'all wouldn't be feeling good and happy when you left. But the truth is, we have a responsibility to the entire body of Christ, not just in our yard. And if that sucker digs up and poops in your yard and he goes to the next yard to destroy it and poop in it, you need to be caring enough about the whole body to call them and say, hey, I need to warn you. There's one coming in your yard that's going to mess it up. Now, you do what you want to, but I'm just telling you, I can tell you for a fact what he did in my yard. We don't want to do that. We don't even want to do it here. Y'all have, we have people that go from this team to this team to this team, and they, help them, and they don't do nothing but cause problems and gripe and air their opinions. And you know what? Have, you ever, have I ever called you and said, hey, no, don't, don't answer that. We need, to, we need to care enough about each other and about each team and about each member in this church and say, wait a minute, and each lost person that comes to this church, we need to say, wait a minute, I, 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 I'm going to hold him accountable, but I also don't want him buffaloing you because that sucker, it took me a while to get over this. We don't want to do that. That's called holding church discipline. Holding accountable. I'm, I'm way through preaching, and I'm way meddling. That don't matter. Way it's 11:50. I'm way out of time, so we're going to touch on all of them. Here's the thing. Here's what I hope we get. Not so much about this church, but about you individually, about you in your life, in the course that you're on. Do you know the road you're supposed to be on? Do you know enough to know when you get off the road and go, I'm on the wrong road. I'm I'm drifting. Do you know enough to do what this song says and hit your knees again? And go, Lord, I don't know how I ended up way out here or way out. I got on my own agenda doing my own thing, and I, it is not about me. Do, we, do, you, do you know that? And here, here, here's the, I want you to be able to, 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 to discern all five of those fools within yourself and within those that you have to deal with. Because if you can discern those five, we will learn how to deal with those five. Does that make sense? Then, you, then those five don't, they're not going, you, if you can discern them, they can't cause you to drift. Because you'll discern them immediately and go, wait a minute, I know this is this and this is this and this is what I should do. And it's up to them what they do. I'm not going to judge them and I'm not going to hate them. It's up to them what they do. But I know as far as for me and my curse, course and my purpose for the Lord, I need to not get drifting. And when I follow them or when I get too involved, I drift. So I, my whole purpose is, 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 yeah, for our church, I want us to quit drifting. I want us to be moving forward. I mean, God's got a specific plan and a purpose for this body, this one right here. He's also got the same purpose and plan for the entire body. And we need to all be moving forward in obedience to do that. At the same time, each and every one of you, when you was born again, God gave you a purpose. 
and he has a plan for you. You will not find it and walk on it if you don't eliminate the fools that keep you drifting. That's what I hope we can do.